It's funny, because just a week ago I was looking for a shell written in Rust, and damn girl, I couldn't find anything actually mainstream. Um, mainstream? Uh, I mean, something that people actually use, and it has active development, and it gets new features and bug fixes. You know, that kind of mainstream. I don't know why, or how, but yesterday I visited the fish repo on GitHub. It's when I first saw it. There is a cargo file here. What's that, hmm? Huh? I knew already fish was written in C++. So, what's going on here, chief? My first guess was that they probably use some bits of rust. For a new function, maybe? Many projects do that nowadays, even GNOME. So next, I check the source folder. <gasps> Whoa. Everything is a Rust file? Oh, and a proof I'm using shell. You can tell because I have notifications disabled, but it simply doesn't work for Chrome, which is the only app that actually sends notifications. That would never have happened if shell was rewritten in Rust. Let me read you why Fish was ported. And the port is relatively recent around a year ago. So, Ridiculous Fish says, I think we should transition to Rust and aim to have it done by the next major release. All right, Fish is currently on 3.7 series, and that's C++. So by next major, it means probably 3.8 or 4. I'm not really familiar with Fish versioning, doesn't even matter. Point is, if you get Fish today, you'll get the C++ version. Um, nobody really likes C++ or CMake and there's no clear path for getting off old tool chains. Every year the pain will get worse. Thank you very much, boss. C++ is becoming a legacy language, and finding contributors in the future will become difficult, while Rust has an active and growing community. Totally true. Basically, you see many good programmers to contribute on Rust or Go already. Or anyway, we get many good Rust and Go programs, but hardly you see something nice on C anymore. Rust is what we need to turn on concurrent function execution. Obviously, we can do concurrency on C++. I guess he means that in Rust is just easier and much safer, translating in much less bugs and better performance. And ironically, even if Rust isn't really fast for doing UI, it proves super good at it, exactly because UIs most often need to handle user inputs, background processes, and real-time updates simultaneously. So without good concurrency, the UI could freeze or become unresponsive, leading to a terrible user experience, which most usually happens on GnomePy apps, by the way. Finally, being written in Rust will help Fish continue to be perceived as modern and relevant. Hey, trust me on this. Nerd psychology is everything. You can have two programs, one in Rust and one in C, functioning exactly the same, and yet, C users will be miserable and sad, but Rust fellows will be like, Oh my gosh, look at her butt, look at her butt, look at her butt. Then he says, This should be thought of as a port instead of a rewrite, because we would not start from scratch. Instead, we would translate C to Rust, incrementally, module by module, in the span of one release. We'll use an FFI so the Rust and C++ bits can talk to each other until C is gone. And when C is gone, people are just happy. 1,200 likes, 80 dis, pfft. Okay, that ain't the first time I'm switching to fish. I've done it a couple of times long ago, but I was always coming back to Z Shell for a few reasons. First is the matter of compatibility. Fish isn't compatible with Bash or Z Shell scripts, which can become super annoying when you work on virtual environments like with Node, that fortunately I don't work anymore, so I'm cool with that. Secondly, I don't like fish auto completions. It's hard to explain, but quite often, instead of helping you, they're actually getting you confused. Like, where the hell I'm now, and what did I want to do at first place anyway? I haven't worked that out yet, but I'm certain I'll find some setup to make it identical to Z Shell. Finally, I didn't really have a reason to switch. Fish, perhaps, is advertised for its out-of-box experience, but in reality, Z Shell offers a better experience just by getting Oh My Z Shell, which it literally takes two minutes to install and configure it but Rust changes everything. Now I do have a real reason to switch. I told you already, it's a nerd psychology thing. Plus I'm quite positive Fish will gain a big development momentum, so it will just getting better and better, and much better than Z Shell. And I've organized a two-phase master plan for the switch. 
In phase one, I'll keep using the C++ version for a maximum of a week to get familiar with it. Then in phase two, I will install the Rust version from main so I can compare and of course, upload a video with my findings. But being currently in phase one, I have made some mods to make my stay as pleasant as possible. Let me share, okay? So that's my prompt theme. Um, let me go inside a repository to see it better. You like? Meanwhile, Files has some cool changes for GNOME 48 release. Actually is Libidweta 1.7 stuff. And anyway, I haven't found the time to upload. I hope I can do tomorrow, and I bet you're gonna love it. Um, and that's my Fish RC, and it's on version 3.71 if you want to know. On top, I have a few aliases for starting flat packs faster. That's the shortcut configuration for shell GPT I show you on previous video. And finally, I'm loading Starship theme, and I have enabled the transient prompt. Basically, I'm going to share you all my configs. Check on YouTube description, all right? Next, it's my Starship theme. Gosh, I really need to fix fish completions. I don't understand fish users don't realize how bad that is. Anywho, that's it. We'll share that too. That's actually a good theme, if you like Pill's design, huh? The other thing is that I have set up the Shell GPT, and I'm using the GPT-40 Mini. Actually, I also want to upload a video with use cases of AI on Terminal, and the pricing of OpenAI. Next week, maybe? So, why did the KDE user bring a ladder to the desktop? Because they heard the interface had too many layers. Average? Oh. And last, but certainly not least, is the official me glyph. It's part of the official me fonts. I'll share it too, but make sure to follow the license before using it. Basically, there is only a single glyph, but I only learned today how to create those. So I'll definitely make a full me emoji set. And also, I'll make a guide if you want to create your own custom fonts. It's easy, once you know how. So that was everything for now. Put a like, leave a comment, and see you tomorrow. Bye-bye!